In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can have character interactions with our Niagara fluids. And this pretty much goes for any Niagara fluids, whether you're using it for smoke and fire, or whether you're using it for uh, water and kind of like a, a 3D ocean, uh, similar to what we've done in our previous videos. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we have the Niagara fluid plugin loaded. So that's something very important to make sure that you have available. So you want to make sure Niagara Fluids is loaded and enabled on the project. For this project, I'm just using the basic third person template or starter map, where when you click play, you can walk around with the, the character that automatically kind of gets set up. So we're going to use this as a test sample to have this character interact with our Niagara Fluids. So the first thing we're going to do is create a pool of water and then have that character interact with that water. Now to make a pool of water, I have to have a spot to place it. So I'm going to take the top of this piece here and kind of Boolean out a bit of a, a section for almost like a little bit of a pool. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab a cylinder. And I'll scale this up and probably something like this work fine. And I'll place it in the top here. It's gonna, and usually you wouldn't wanna do like full modeling in Unreal. You can, but it might not be the quickest way to do things uh, if you're to build something more complex. But I think this is gonna work fine. So I'm gonna take this here and I'll take this geo, this cylinder, and this block here, and we're gonna Boolean it away. Uh, so to do that, what we're going to end up doing is using not select mode here, but we're going to change it to be our modeling mode. And we'll be able to select these this geometry, the base, and then the cylinder and Boolean or subtract it away. So I'll take this geometry, I'll hold control, select this geometry, and I'll go in this list here. And I'm going to look for Boolean. So I can see there's voxel operations, wrap, blend, morph, Boolean. And there's also merge, but I'm going to do Boolean. So I'll click on that. OK, it takes it away. And then I could accept. And that pretty much makes a cut in. Now, it's a little bit chattery on the edges. And that's because I did a voxel Boolean. A better way for geometry like this would be to select this cube, hold control, select the cylinder, and not use a voxel boolean, which can be useful to build up more complex shapes or things. Uh, but there also is another way in here uh, to do this a little bit cleaner, and it's under the poly model mesh boolean. And that will kind of cut the geometry. Might not work with as complex shapes. If you're cutting something away from a more detailed shape, you're going to have to use mesh boolean. Uh, not mesh boolean, uh, the voxel boolean. But for something simple like this, mesh boolean under poly model mesh bool will do a nicer cut. And I'll select accept. And there we go. We have a nice hole cut into that geo. So I could leave my modeling mode and I can play. And let's check to make sure that's all working. We have that. Oh, well, there we go. I fell into the the pool. And the question is, can I jump out? Not really, but that's okay. So we'll leave it at that. Now we have a dip. So we need to create our water to go inside there. So nothing crazy. We're just going to create a Niagara system. We're going to use a template. We're just going to take the 3D water as a sample here, the grid 3D flip pool. Finish. And we'll call it FXS pool. So X system pool. And we'll open that up. So once we open that effect system, I'm going to pause it from playing or simulating so it doesn't take forever. Um, it's going to make sure the menus are all nicely sized. And we're going to take a look at what we're going to adjust here. So by default, we're going to get interactions with static meshes. 
if those static meshes have an actor tag called collider. And if you look in the FXS pool here, and we look into our selection here, and we search for, we just scroll down, I look for where the collision is here. We can see there's static mesh collisions. And if I open that up, it says static mesh tag collider. If you have a tag called collider, you get interactions. So if I were to just save this and throw this pool into the scene, take it here and drop it into the scene. Let's size it correctly. So it might be a bit hard to tell where it's being placed because it will update, which is a little bit annoying. So you can always just go in here and toggle off the auto activate and uh, it should pop up. But we're going to have to see where this is. And one reason why it's not going to show is it's at the center of the world. Off and on. There it is. If I move it, it kind of disappears. If I reactivate, don't see it. If we were to play the game, you don't see it either. So we have to make sure we can move it. And when we place this pool in the scene, uh, one thing that's important is you'll see it right away. And if you move it, it kind of breaks. So it, if you play, it will show it, but it's not showing it below a certain height, which is a little bit frustrating. And this is because if I refresh, refresh that effect system by selecting it and toggling auto activate, then it will show up. Let's see if I go lower, toggle auto activate, there it goes. If I push it up this above a certain point, then we don't see it. And that's because the height doesn't move with it. The height is fixed based on world space. And that height is available and adjustable in the effect system. So you always want to make sure that it's flush with the zero of the world. So right on the ground, if I look at the Location, zero on Z, zero on up and down. If I want the water to be higher, like if I push this, I'm going to do this simulation even though I don't want it, and I'll just reactivate it by toggling auto activate. There it is. You can see its bounds, and maybe we need to make its bounds smaller. So it's only really just within that square covering this cylinder. So I'll go into the pool effect system. We'll go into the properties or the user parameters actually. That will just filter it out here. And we're going to set the, the world grid units, how big it is, how large this pool is. So X and Y by 800, probably too big. Let's do 650 on X and 650 on Y. This is going to make it smaller. And if we save that and give that a try, we're going to have much smaller bounds. Let's take a look. OK, so it's a little bit smaller now. Still not ideal. We're going to go even smaller. Maybe I'll just do 500 and 500. And if you are making the bounds smaller, you could probably reduce uh, how detailed it is. So you could also reduce the number of maximum cells and you'll get faster performance out of it. This is quite heavy to use the 3D fluids, but this should be much better at a bounds of 500 by 500. So once that's done updating and we save, we will see. OK, now that nicely fits in that area. Oh, it's a little bit over that side. Push it a bit. Make sure it doesn't break through the wall here. That's OK. And maybe it needs to go taller because it's not high enough to fill this full pool. So then we can just say water height instead of 150. Maybe we make it 175. So it's going to fill up the water more. And that, that height parameter is in world units. So it starts at zero in height. 
regardless how you move your box, move your container higher, lower, it doesn't care. This is your water height in world space. So now we have something with higher water and we can test this out. Like if I were to go and run around in it, so play this and run on the character over to that area and go into the pool, we don't really get any interaction. However, if we go and take a shape like a sphere, add an actor tag called collider, so actor tag, there it is, actor tags, collider, and set this to movable, and then just simulate so I can move it around. We'll be able to see that we get interaction with that. So that works. But a character doesn't work. So if we want our character to have interaction with this pool, we have to go set up a couple things. So first thing is we're going to go into this FXS pool. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the setup to have a reference that can point to a skeletal mesh or like a, a model with a rig. So once we open this up, so now that we have this loaded, we'll click on our FXS pool. We could go to user parameters just to explain what we're going to do here. And under user parameters, we have static mesh collisions, which determines our tag for anything that's static mesh that wants to collide with this water. We also have physics collisions, which we're going to have to use. And if you go under source, nothing really set here. So we're going to have to create a way of pointing our, our skeletal mesh of our character to our physics collisions. So the first thing before we actually have to do anything is we have to enable physics, physics collisions on this fluid simulation or on this fluid effect system. So we're going to go to emitter summary in our grid 3D flip fluid control emitter. And we're going to look here under collisions and we're going to see use physics asset collisions. We're going to turn that on. So we enable physics asset collisions. Then we're going to go back to our FXS pool, the overall kind of effect system here. And we're going to go under user parameters and we're going to add a user parameter. So the user parameter we want to add is going to be an object like a reference to an object. So we're going to click plus on user parameters. We're going to search for an object. There it is, object. We get that now under here. We get this new object. We're going to rename this. So we want to give it a proper name that properly describes what we're actually adding. So maybe we'll call it something like skeletal, skeletal mesh collision. Okay. And now where is it? Somewhere. Skeletal mesh collision. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Skeletal mesh collision. And that's a reference to an object. So now what we're going to do is we're going to point this parameter that we created called skeletal mesh collision to our physics collisions here. So we're going to say mesh user parameter and use our skeletal mesh collision. So now our physics collisions are pointing to this parameter, which refers to an object. And then what we're going to do is save this. We're going to set that object reference through a blueprint. So we're going to go into the scene and we're going to go just to the level blueprint. You could do this anywhere um, where it, it kind of runs or, or kind of triggers, but I'm just going to do it in the level blueprint. 
So I'm going to go here, open up the level blueprint. Uh, and then in the level blueprints, I'm going to do event begin play. So right when the game begins. And what we're going to do is set a parameter in that effect system through our blueprint. So we're going to drag this out and do set Niagara variable. And if you don't see it, turn off the context sensitive. And it's going to be an object reference. So here it is, set Niagara variable object. We need a target, which is going to be our effect system. So the best way to do this is take the effect system that you have in your scene, because you might have multiple, but you don't probably, you probably don't want kind of physics collisions with characters on all of them. So I'm just going to take my pool reference from the scene here, like click it in the outliner and drag it into my blueprint and use that as a target. The variable name that we want to set is going to be what we called it. So that is skeletal mesh collision. Make sure you spell it exactly how you have it in your effect system for the parameter, otherwise it won't work. And then object, we have to point to the object that we want to properly interact with this. So what we're going to do in this case is just get the player. So we're going to do get player one. And then what we can do is get component by class, because we don't want to get the whole thing. We just want to get uh, a skeletal mesh, get component by class. And the component that we're going to use is going to be a skeletal mesh. Skeletal mesh component. And then connect that up to our object. And then we'll save this. No errors. We'll click play and test it out. So now we have our character. Run up here. We see that water. What happens if we go into it? Hey, there we go. We got our proper fluid collisions. So now we have interactions with our character. So it's not easy. It's really just a matter of setting up our, our blueprint and making sure you have a reference that can point to the character or to the specific uh, character animated object that you want to interact with that fluid surface and and you do that based on not everything you don't want everything to interact with there's only certain things that would make sense maybe the player the enemies that's it you don't want it to interact with everything otherwise it will just get too heavy uh, maybe a few years from now you'll be able to have it interact with everything but not, not currently so that's that's it and that's how you can kind of get your fluid simulations to interact with your players uh, and with moving characters or anything that has a skeletal mesh and animation. Now, if you want to see these steps and kind of go through them at a bit more uh, time and a slower pace, uh, if you subscribe to the Patreon, you also do have this and all these steps uh, as a PDF that you can download as well. So definitely check that out.